Alright, okay. Minsan pa po, we are here in Super Rich God, the voice of God. This is your host, Bishop Ricardo Show. Of course, our title for today is very uh, wonderful uh, message. And the title is The Enabling Grace of God. In Luke chapter 2 verse 40, And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Many parents' goal is to see their children to be known for their character, being brave, kind, and wise. The term growing in stature means a child is developing physically, emotionally, and even spiritually, and is developing favorable reputation within the society. At 12 years old, Jesus started building up a reputation when he was found by his parents while preaching in the synagogue. At this tender age, most children are more focused with games, toys, and playtime. The child Jesus already knew his purpose on earth and he was determined determined to carry out his father's business. Like Jesus, we too have experienced growing up. Although we know that Jesus came to earth for a heavenly mission, he also lived in the tension of whom God called him to be and who the world's hope he would become. Realize too, that we are no different in this aspect. We all grow in the same struggle between who God called us to be and what the world intends for us to be. Luke gave a recount of the child Jesus growing up in stature and wisdom, saying, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. As we had been brought up in an understanding that success in this life is brought about by our hard work, intelligence, and determination, and later on, we realize that it takes favor from God to excel in our lives attaining success. It takes a special anointing of grace to become what God intends for us to be. But Apostle Paul, who is known for his dedication to God's word and his determination to further the gospel, has this account of himself. In 1 Corinthians, Chapter 15, verse 9 to 10, Paul said of himself, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet qualified to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. My brother and sister, grace is defined as God's unmerited favor upon humanity. 
it is the most valuable asset in the race of life, grace is that ingredient that allows us to succeed even when we fall short. Grace brings our mountain down. Grace terminates disgrace and turns ridicules into a miracle. Grace that does not always choose the qualified, but qualifies the chosen. It singles a man out of the crowd to crown him. Grace will always be sufficient for our need in life. Amen? So in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, it said, Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone amid shout of grace, grace to it. Amen? And in the book of Zechariah, the responsibility of finishing the work of rebuilding the temple fell on Zerubbabel. The work stalled for long and Zerubbabel needed encouragement to carry on. In Zechariah 3, the Lord spoke to his prophet about the issue of purity and that purity alone was not enough to accomplish the word of God. The word of God also needs resources and not the resources of human might or power. To understand further, might focuses on a collective strength while power focuses on individual strength. God says that it is not by the resources of many or one, but by my spirit. It will not be by your cleverness, your ability, or your physical strength that the temple will be rebuilt, but by the Spirit of God. Even in our days, the Word of God is so massive that our neither might nor power will so peace to accomplish the work. Most often, we got weary relying on our strength, trust in our own resources, or the power of our riches. Whether they will be small or great in the eyes of men, forgetting that it is, it is still God who finished His word by His Spirit and that we are missing on a lot. The creative power of the Holy Spirit that is present and active in creation in Genesis 1 verse 2 and the power that opened the Red Sea and close it as shown in Exodus chapter 15 verse 8 and 10, and the power that gave life to the dry bones in Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 14 is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, is the same power that enable and empower us to do His bidding on earth and in our lives. It is only by His grace through faith that saved us from eternal condemnation and His grace that do His work in building us up in holiness and righteousness. As God had reminded Zerubbabel before, He is also reminding us today that it is the Holy Spirit who will supply our needs. As the Lord used the oil from the olive trees continually supplied to the lamb on lampstand, God always wanted us to be reliant on His unlimited resources continually. As Church Sport John reminded us in this saying, O churches, 
Take heed lest ye trust in yourself. Take heed lest you say, We are a respectable body. We are a mighty number. We are a potent people. Take heed lest you begin to glory in your own strength. For when that is done, Ikabod shall be written on your walls and your glory shall depart from you. Remember that he who was with us when we were but few must be with us now we are many or else we must fail. And he who strengthened us when we were but as little in Israel must be with us now that we are like the thousand of Manasseh. Or else it is all over with us and our day is past. It truly pays to trust in the Lord all the days of our life. Amen? For God reminded Zerubbabel that not only that the word will be done, but he shall finish it, setting the capstone and declaring that it was all a word of grace. We must understand why God has specifically spoke of this is because of man's tendency to boast. Imagine, when the work is done through human might, power or resources, then men will take credit for it. But when the work is continually done by, the, by His Spirit, then it is all for the glory of God's grace. We need to be reminded of what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 say. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, meaning we cannot take credence over our own justification. Our sanctification and our salvation, which is obviously not man's work, but the word of God brought about by His grace and His mercy and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to remind everyone that who we are today are words of the Holy Spirit and no man can take the glory for himself but to God alone belong all the glory. To explain further, my brother and sister, Grace is the unmerited favor of God given to men freely. Many people in the Old Testament found grace in the sight of the Lord and they had been known in the history of mankind as God's vessel of His grace for salvation. In Genesis chapter 6, God becomes so angry with men doing abominable things in His sight that He repented on ever created man and even proposed in his heart to wipe out creation on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. But in Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. God used Noah to build an ark during the time of God's judgment through a flood. And the ark now represents the salvation God had planned out during the most evil days of men. It is a great blessing to know that even though the vilest of men, God has already mapped out a plan for His salvation. Such is grace. We are not deserving, but God took mercy upon us and sent His begotten Son to the world to die as atonement for our sins. That we who are the vilest of men shall finally be able to receive forgiveness, justification, and be qualified to receive the grace for righteousness. Not by our own intention, purity, good works, but the grace of God who continually worked out for our good. Like Noah, Esther, Sherubabel, we too are being reminded the truth 
that apart from God, we can do nothing and we are nothing. Remember, we are just mere men, created from the dirt of the ground. Can anything clean or good come out of us? Except the Lord take mercy on us. We are destined to suffer life as sinner, separated from God, and obviously destined to suffer eternal judgment of hell. But the Bible says that the love of God is ever present throughout and His grace was given because of His mercy with no reference nor credit to our own goodness and righteousness as human being. Amen? John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. My brother and sister, our topic for today is the enabling power or the enabling power power of the grace of God. According to Zerubbabel, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. That's why my brother and sister, according to the, the plan of God, according to Jeremiah 29.11, my plan for you is to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you hope and a future. Amen? Before the beginning began, be before the beginning started, God already planted everything upon you and upon me and upon our life. So according to our Bible, main Bible verse today, in Luke 2, chapter 40, in Luke Chapter 2, verse 40. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. Imagine, Jesus is so strong and full of wisdom. But the most emphasized and important about everything else in this verse is, And the favor of God was upon him. Amen. So, it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the grace of God. Amen? It is by the Spirit of God, it is by the favor of God. That's why we need the grace of God upon our life. In every, grace is not only for, for our salvation. Grace is all we need in our everyday walk of life. Every day of our life, 24-7, we need the grace of God upon us. We need the favor of God upon us. Amen? That's why I believe today, as we learn and uh, listen to this uh, wonderful message of enabling grace of God, the power of God, we understand that we need the enabling power of God for our success and victory. Amen? So, my brother and sister, thank you so much for another day. And I believe you understand more about the goodness and the sweetness of the word grace. Amen? The most beautiful word on earth is love. They say, but I think the most sweetest. Amen? More than love is the enabling grace of our Lord Jesus. God bless you and see you again in our next episode. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am Bishop Enrico, member of the Bishop Council of Light Center Ministry and the head pastor of Jesus in His Presence International Mission with each headquarter at Palihan, Hermosa, Bataan, Philippines. I really thank the Lord for giving us this great privilege to share the Word of God 
to all the people all over the world through this FB Super Rich God Satellite Studio. I thank God for the kind generosity of His faithful son and servant, Bishop Cardin Show, for His sharing with us this great opportunity. May the Lord continue to bless this man. Our Super Rich God Satellite Studio with subtitle, Biyaya La, which means Grace Alone, is stationed here at Palihan, Hermosa Bataan, Philippines. Through this simple program, many of our relatives, friends, neighbors have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and accepted Him as their personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah! God be praised! And not only that, many people which we do not know personally are watching and following our program and were blessed because of the heavenly music of Bishop Carding Show and upon hearing the messages of grace from the Word of God. People send us their prayer concerns and we assure them that we are here to pray for them. I would like to thank this opportunity also to thank the people of God whom He used for His timely and very powerful tool to spread the messages of grace. Thanks to Bishop Carding Show, your kindness and generosity was so appreciated by us. Thanks to Apostle Dino Balyao, Brother Boots Charbet, and Pastor Nomer Andaya. And also, I would like to thank my beloved wife, Agnes Rico, my son, Pastor Dudes, and his wife, Kat, and my grandchildren, Sean and Daniel, in assisting me every time I have a program. And of course, thanks to all our viewers and followers and to those who shared our program to others. But above all, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ in whom is the center and the main reason and purpose of all this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your name be lifted up always in our lives. Yours truly, Bishop Ronnie Rico, be yaya lang. Grace alone, Super Rich God, FB Satellite Studio, here at Palihan, Hermosa, Bataan, Philippines, saying His grace is sufficient for all of us. God be praised.